morning everybody morning folks you all picked a good morning to to do this one i'm brent jeffries vice president of field operations safety trainer speaker i've been doing what you guys are going to get today for about seven years now it's called alignment safety and tool training uh, we have that group on linkedin and facebook lineman safety and tool training it's a great resource you guys can get on board we also have it on uh, Facebook as well. So real quick, Walter Beer is my stepdad. I call him my dad. He raised me since I was five. And he's basically the owner of the company. He started out with the grounds tester 37 years ago. He was given the challenge to come up with something to test your TPGs. We're going to go in depth about that. They're really important. And then it's 37 years later, he has 17 patents and we build all these tools. And this is most of them, but we even have more than this. First thing we're gonna discuss is OSHA, right here. These regulations, these regulations are basically scriptures for linemen. Scriptures for linemen, these rules were written because somebody got hurt, somebody bled, somebody lost an arm, somebody didn't come home for the rest of their life because their life was taken, all right? So you got rules. We're gonna talk about these rules some to some degree, but MTE, you guys are gonna take these rules as a foundation, as a starting point. You gotta have a good foundation. Here's a good foundation. What you all are gonna do is you're gonna take this good foundation, these rules, you're gonna go over them and you're gonna to add to them. You're gonna you're gonna manipulate to where the, there, you even go above and beyond what these rules say. And we'll talk about some of those extra steps for you all, okay? That you guys can implement and practice. So we're going to talk about we're going to talk about three things today. We're going to talk about tactical safety. That's one thing. All right. We're also going to talk about technical training, and we're also going to talk about psychological safety. After doing this, I'm bringing in psychological safety because after seven years, the biggest reason I see linemen not coming home or losing body parts, the single biggest reason has nothing to do with the lack of safety meetings. Nothing to do with the lack of safety training at all. The biggest reason folks aren't coming home or they're losing body parts, the biggest reason is right here. That's it, that's it, okay? So we're gonna go in depth about right here. I get the unfortunate opportunity to hear about all these incidences that have taken place. We've lost about, since the last part of December, we lost till now, today, we just lost another guy a couple days ago. Um, we've lost about 14 linemen so far. It's the worst I've ever seen in my life. That doesn't include the other incidences. That doesn't include hurt where they're losing arms or legs. This is where a guy passes, gone, all right? So part of this psychological safety, I'm gonna intermingle this in and out of the technical, in and out of the tactical training, safety training. And I'm gonna do a little bit of this in between because there's a lot. So this poem here is by Mr. Don Merrill. You all may have heard it, but we need to hear it again to remind ourselves, all right? And it's called, I chose to look the other way. I could have saved a life that day, but I chose to look the other way. It wasn't that I didn't care. I had the time and I was there, but I didn't want to seem a fool or argue over a safety rule. I knew he'd done the job before. If I spoke up, he might get sore. The chances didn't seem that bad. I'd done the same, he knew I had. So I shook my head and walked by. He knew the risk as well as I. He took the chance, I closed an eye, and with that act, I let him die. I could have, I could have saved a life that day, but I chose to look the other way. <clears throat> now every time I see his wife, I know I should have saved his life. That guilt is something I must bear, but isn't something you need to share. If you see a risk that others take that puts their health or life at stake, the question asked or thing you say could help them live another day. All right, this is so important. This is what's the issue here. The issue is us. It's not the lack of training or a new safety rule. You guys, you guys, when you were born, your mama and daddy, they never had a tailboard gathering you around the, the family room. And, and have a tailboard, you guys sign off on, on this tailboard, where that tailboard said, that drain underneath the sink, you cannot drink it. If you do, you will die. 
There was no safety rule that you guys talked about as far as that goes because you knew better. It's in you instinctively. You, are, you all need to understand you all have gifts. You are super important and believe it or not, you're all geniuses. But the truth is, your genius is written inside of you. It's inherited. It's just part of who you are. You are a gifted person. And what happens is when we focus on this, we focus on self, our gifts become dull. Our gifts become numb and not sharp. But you guys know better. There was a guy several years ago, an apprentice doing storm, storm work, Louisiana. He grabs a hold of one line. It's de-energized. He grabs a hold of it. He puts it in his belt. That tail, he puts it in his belt and he climbs a pole. He's got a sleeve. He's going to put these lines together. He grabs a hold of the other side and instantly he's dead. He never checked the line. What was he thinking about? Why didn't he ever test it? You never assume that, it, that a, a source, a possible source, any conductor is de-energized. Why did he do that? He knew better. What was he thinking about? It wasn't his job. It's not because he lacked safety. He didn't lack training saying, oh, electricity flows through conductors. Do you know that? You need to know that. This is our safety meeting. He knew that. He just grabbed a hold of it. And sometimes we get this attitude in our mind where we, we, we think that we got to get her done. We got to prove something to the foreman. We're, we're, we just moved up to a lineman position. We're about to move up and, and, and get that bigger paycheck because we've been doing this for four or five, six years and it's about time that I get recognized. It's about time that everybody shows me respect. So I'm going to get her done. But what about the, the saying when we're out in the field, what about the saying that we need to live by, which is we're not going to talk about safety because safety is a noun. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about working safely because that's a verb. That's an action word. That word is what we do when we are here, when we drive from home, we're in this yard, when we leave and go home and everything in between. We're going to work safely. Y'all get that? Okay? We're not going to talk about safety. We're going to talk about working safely, and we're going to do working safely. All right? So you all, you all, real quick, you all watch football, like football, know anything about football maybe? I heard some guys the other night talking about football. All right? From you guys, from your crews. Anyways, you guys are a line team. Middle Tennessee, you all are a line team. It doesn't matter if you're the CEO. It doesn't matter if you're the safety guy. It doesn't matter if you're an apprentice. It doesn't matter if you don't want to climb a pole and you just want to be a laborer your whole life. It doesn't, none of that matters. Position, titles, nothing matters when it comes to the team. Everybody fits in the team doing their thing. Maybe you're on the team and you're, kept, you're fetching water for the boys. Okay? Getting them some Gatorade. That's fine. You're still part of the team. All right? And so as part of the team, we play this game together. There is no, you're, you're, there is no, you're not, you're not running track. Track individual sport. You're not running track. We're a team. You got to be collective and you got to be cumulative. Something like that. I don't know that word. All right? You got to be together. And what happens is every football game, the idea of the game, right, is to control the ball. Is that correct? Is that true? Control the ball? Okay? That's part. That's the goal. Control the ball, you win the game. With you guys, your line team, the ball is simply this. It's your mind. It's your mind. And... And you have to control that ball. You got to control your consciousness. And you got to work together as a team in order to do that. If you got something on your mind while you're doing your line work, why obviously the, the young apprentice doing the storm work, when he grabbed a hold of that conductor, not even thinking for a second that conductor was de energized, 
or assuming. You don't assume, or he was assuming. Who does that? That is de-energized. Someone told him it was de-energized, but he never personally checked it himself. Okay? That's not, we don't tell things. We confirm. We prove. Visually. You got to know that you know that you know. You got to control the ball. All right? So we got to work this together. All right, you got the stands. Everybody's watching you. You got the stands watching you play this game called line work. And you're a team. So in those stands, who's in the stands? When you go to a football game, when you, you guys play high school football, okay? Who was in there watching you? You had your family. You had your friends. They're watching you. Your family and friends are watching you today. They can't, they're not here watching you, but they hear the stories. They hear the experiences that you guys go through, that you guys talk about. So they hear, they're in the stands. Your family, the same thing. And they're rooting for you guys. They're rooting for you guys to come home safe. They're rooting for you guys to make that paycheck. So they're rooting for you. But who else is in the stands watching you? Your adversary. Yes or no? Your adversary is watching you. And that adversary wants you to lose the game. That adversary does not want you to control the ball. That adversary does not want you to stay set and focused consciously, mentally, and as a team. That adversary is ego. That adversary is pride. That adversary is get her done, son. That's your adversary. And the adversary wants to take that ball away from you. The adversary wants to take that mind, that focus, that gift that you guys do have away from you. They're doing a good job. News, politics, all this bull crap going on right now. They're doing a great job. They are. They're good at it. And most of us, we fall for it. We think it's a real thing. All right? And what happens is you get focused on stuff. Maybe you're in debt. Maybe you're struggling because you had this new paycheck, so you got a new truck. Then you got a new car. Then you got a new this, a new that, a bigger one of those, and a bigger one of these. Now you're in debt. So now you're mentally unfocused because of that. You see how this works? Live below your means. It's healthy. And then you can stay focused and stay a team. All right? Okay. Any questions thus far? All right. Just remember, team, man. All right. So here we go. We're going to talk about temporary protective grounds. If you go to OSHA 1910.269, you go to number four, and you go down to, no, I'm sorry, you go down to letter N, letter N, that looks like an N, letter N, lowercase N. You go down to number four, talks about your TPGs, temporary protective grounds, and it talks about how the IEEE 1048 and the ASTM F855 are guidelines for the OSHA regs. And you read those and it talks about how you all, before using your TPGs, are going to perform a visual inspection. All right? You're going to perform a visual inspection. And in that visual inspection, you're going to verify that your cable is not crimped, that your cable is not smashed, that you, you don't see any blackened cable or patinaed cable. You don't want to see any bubble jacket. I've never seen bubble jacket. All right? We got too hot. You don't want to see any cracks in your clamps, obvious loose components, oxidization on your, on your parts, your components, especially your contact points. You don't want to see any of those things. Okay, that's a visual inspection. You're also going to perform a mechanical inspection. You're going to grab a hold of your TPGs, and these are your best friend. We're going to talk about two best friends today. These are one of your best friends right here. You're going to make sure you cannot mechanically with your physical strength, even if you don't have a lot of strength, you don't need a lot of strength to do this, you're gonna make sure you can't twist that, that clamp off the ferrule. You're also gonna make sure that that cable is nice and tight in the crimps of the ferrule, that it doesn't wiggle within that ferrule. No wiggle, okay? Make sure. If it passes the visual inspection and it passes the mechanical inspection, Typically, your TPGs, your best friend, is going to do good for you that day. It's that simple. You're also going to verify that your date stamp is in compliance with your protocol. How often you get tested, 
We recommend once a month. It's not written in the regs. It's not written in the guidelines. That needs to be changed. Some folks go 18 months, some 24. That's too long, I believe. Some folks go six months. I think that's too much. As long as you're doing a visual, that's fine. Take care of your best friend. Your best friend will take care of you. You get called out on a storm. You get called out on restoration, an outage or something, and you could get skipped. If you get skipped, verify that your date stamp is in compliance. If it's not, get them tested. Borrow an extra set from somebody and put, take these out of service. Just take them out of service. All right? After seven years doing this coast to coast, I have gone to many utilities, large, Small, munis, cooperatives, you name it, IOUs, it doesn't matter. And a lot of these folks, when I showed up, they never heard these words. Think about it. They never train their linemen about their best friend. You need to know about your best friend. And what happens is I start talking to talk, and they, take, they, they say, whoa, what's going on here? We never heard this. And they'll go to their truck, they'll bring their set of grounds over and say, hey, check them out and we want to electrically test them because we never have. And I'm looking at their set of grounds and I'm seeing everything you don't want to see, I'm seeing it all. And some of them have been really bad. And these linemen were trusting their lives with their supposed to be best friend. And they weren't taking care of their best friend at all. In fact, their best friend was basically useless. And the reason why? is because when you have all these infractions, you do the electrical test, I'll turn up the, the, the amp meter right here, the Variac, and those numbers, they're supposed to be two, 300 amps. And what happens, you turn those numbers up to two, 300 amps to electrically test, and those numbers within a split second fall on their face. It cannot take continuous current. Therefore, if, that, if a fault current hit their TPGs, which is supposed to be their best friend, they would be dead. They would be dead. That's disgusting, man. And these, and these, and we're talking about seven years ago to today. Even today, some folks don't electrically test their TPGs or train their linemen to take care of. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do the electrical test. When you do electrical test, you're gonna keep your TPGs in parallel to, to simulate you guys using them out in the field. Plus, this mitigates the magnetic field. When you use your TPGs out in the field, you all are going to be going from point A to point B, setting up your EPZ, setting up your, your grounding, your protection zone around you, equal potential. And you're going you're gonna to go ahead and put them where they're kind of in a straight line. You're going to have some droopage, but you're not going to have any coils. They're not going to be any coils. They're not going to be on your left on your truck grounds with a little extra. You're going to reel that truck ground all the way out on the ground and run them side by side, basically in a parallel configuration to mitigate that magnetic field that it's going to want to produce if they get hit by a potential fault current. So we're going to test real quick. And we simply take this, this ground sensor is Walter Beer's first tool 37 years ago. And it's basically what he did is he puts continuous current on the test. Other manufacturers are glorified ohms meter. Some have some, a little current, but we have continuous current. Not only that, but he did the math 37 years ago, and here's the chart. ASTM F855, what they did is they took Walter Beers, my dad's, they took his chart and they put it on page two, table one, in the guidelines. He did the math for ASTM. That's kind of cool, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and put 165 amps. That's what's required on a number two. Number two, I don't like it, it's too flimsy, but it's easier to carry around. So what we're gonna do is we got 0.229, we'll call it 0.23 voltage drop, that top meter. Can you see that, Adam? Mr. Adam, kind of, sort of? You gotta just believe me, all right? All right, the chart says a 0.24 voltage drop or less, and it passes, this passes. So the test is over, it's very safe. There's current, I can feel it flowing through here, but there's very little voltage, so there's no shock potential. So the safety that we put, that dad put in this tool is in all of our tools, and we'll talk a lot about what's in those tools as far as safety as we continue on, all right? All right, so the test is over, and it passed. What we're gonna do is we're gonna complete, and we're gonna build some coils here. 
I was doing training for a large uh, electrical contractor in North Carolina a couple years ago. And after the training, he said, hey, when we do transmission, I got, I got some cable that does 230. I get on the 69, the cable's a little long. So what I do, because it's a little long on the 69, I coil it up and put electrical tape and it looks all pretty hanging on those conductors. It looks professional. You're telling me I can't do that? I said, I'm not telling you. I said, the magnetic, the magnetic field is telling you you can't do that. You listen to me or you listen to your reality. And we're gonna talk about not electrical theory today. We're gonna to talk about your electrical reality that you all work with every day. And we're gonna prove everything we talk about, including this, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up to about 300 amps. Okay? Now, as you know, probably some of you now, I got a magnet <coughs> inside this bottle, okay? And we're gonna put this magnet inside that coil. Okay, y'all see that? That's your reality, hear that? All right, that's what's happening. And that, what that does, that magnetic field is creating resistance. That resistance is creating thermal activity as well. And I'm feeling it heat up in my hands, just a little bit, feels kind of good, all right? So you see that? You don't want that. Now we're gonna go parallel. When you test cable, you always keep them in parallel. Take the same result, and I come in with the magnet. There's a little hum, a little vibration, but it's smooth. Kind of, kind of is nice. It's not all erratic. So we got, we got all kinds of safety videos. If you go to, I, I'd recommend you all subscribe to Beer Meters YouTube channel. We've got a lot of tool training videos, Beer Meters tool training, and we got a lot of Beer Meters safety training videos. We just put one on last night. My guy came to me that does my videographer, my videographer and my graphics guy came to me and they just finished a really cool video. And we're gonna talk about that short clip to safety. It's called uh, Lyman Safety Short Clip. That's kind of a cool name. Came up with it this morning. Anyways, you guys can, can download those, use them for your supplement, your safety training, anytime you want. We got full length videos that go through the whole training. It's about two and a half hours long. Today will be about two and a half hours long. All right, so we're gonna talk about your voltage indicators. We have a horn and light. If y'all ever use horn and light, uh, I, I don't think you do here. Do you guys do MTE, horn and light? No? Okay, good, I don't like them. But if you ever go to utility, a lot of utilities do use them, they're cheaper. And to me, they give you less information not as accurate, I don't like them that much, but hey, hot or not, they're great. They work great. So a horn and light, if you ever do a battery test, that's the first thing you're gonna do in the field before you use your, your tester is you're gonna do a battery test. Push button, some manufacturers are push button, we're a switch plate, okay? So that's what we use. So a battery test is just a battery test. You're gonna hear and you're gonna see, that's it. If you don't hear or see, you wanna go ahead and take out, take get a wrench, take out the quick change right here where your hot stick adapter goes on to be put on your hot stick. Where's hot stick adapter? Right there. That goes on your shotgun or whatever you have, extendo, whatever. All right, a battery test. You put a new battery in it, tap out the nine volt, put a new nine volt in. If you still don't see in here, the tool's broken, send it in to us for repair. We built the tools from scratch in South Carolina about what, eight hour drive from here? Not too bad, in South Carolina. And you guys send them in to us 10 years, 20 years from now, we can fix them, we built it, and we recalibrate, okay? So do that. And analog, I think you guys have some analogs in your system. You're gonna make sure when you do the battery test, you're gonna see the needle deflect hard, okay? Right there, deflect hard. If it does not deflect, or if that is partial, you see that, Adam? Okay. If it's partial, the battery's bad, put a new battery in. If it still does it, the tool's broken, send it in. Don't waste time on it, all right? Our repair turnaround time is one or two days plus shipping. That's it. We're really good. We do about 100 repairs a week all around the country. It's pretty cool. 
All right, digital, I prefer digital. That battery's no good. I prefer digital. The reason why is because they give you more information. My line crews are gonna have digital. They're safer, they give you more information. The analogs, they have moving parts. It's little springs, little levers. If you drop them a few times, they could be uncalibrated, they could break. The digital are much more robust. All right, I dropped one yesterday before training in uh, Dublin. Where are we at? Where's that town at? Huh? Lebanon. Yeah, I knew it was some foreign town. All right. So we were in we were in Lebanon yesterday, and I dropped the tool, and I picked it up and used it the rest of the training. All right. But digitals are pretty strong. They're pretty good. So battery test. They give you the voltage, about 8.1 volts, right? So that's more information. It gives you the actual battery voltage. That's better information than the, the horn and light or the analog. That's my point, more information. They're a lot safer, all right? So your care, you're gonna make sure you use your hot stick wipes, you're gonna keep the probes clean. No calibration stickers, no dirt, no grease, no paint. And the reason why is because you want to prevent any possible ex external tracking from the conductor to the meter head. Okay, so keep it clean. If you want stickers, if you want to put truck number, if you want to put, this is Kyle's tool, you can't touch it, I'm taking you down. Okay, do that on the meter head, right Kyle? Do that on the meter head. All right, that's okay, because the, con the components inside the meter head, which make it work and give you the voltage indication, they're what's conductive. All right, okay, now let's continue. When you use these, always use the proper accessory. Straight probe, hook probe, maybe you need a bushing adapter, you're on some underground, you're, do you're working on a feed through, you're doing some high pot, whatever. Okay, you're gonna use a bushing adapter. Okay, hook probe. There's one, we have a couple. All right, and the reason why you're always gonna use the proper accessory on the end of the cone tip is because you wanna protect the fact that you know that there's resistors right here at the end of the probe. There's a line limit. You can't see it too good for you guys in the nosebleed section, but there actually is a line limit right here, about two and a half inches down. And that line limit's gonna remind you all. It's gonna remind you all that there's resistors right here those resistors are used and in the tool to protect the tool from the primary possible primary voltage. And ultimately, those resistors are also going to help protect you on your stick behind the tool. That makes sense? So you're always going to remember that, all right? So if that's the truth, then that means that the tool is looking at that primary voltage and the tool is going to be looking at that primary voltage and giving you a voltage indication in phase, out of phase, phase to ground, whatever. And there, therefore, the tool must be energized to some potential in order to give you that reading, correct? Yeah, the tool's energized, okay? A lot of folks think that these tools are not energized. They're isolated, they're insulated when you're using them. That's not true at all. They're actually energized. They don't have the full potential which you make contact with, but they have a chunk. And we'll see that today. You'll, they'll have a chunk, a portion, okay? All right, so knowing that, that's why you gotta use the accessories because using the accessories help you stay focused on keeping those resistors protected and not bypassing. They give you more distance so you have less opportunity to bypass those resistors Let's say it's dark outside, it's misty, it's raining, it's early in the morning or late at night, and you don't bypass those resistors because you have that accessory to help you with that depth perception, okay? That's real simple. All right, so knowing that, what you're gonna do when you use, and this safety is with anybody's tools. You use somebody else's tools, manufacturer's tools, that's fine. The safety is exactly the same on down the road. It's no different, it's just our tools are better, so we use our tools for the safety training, and plus we build them. So that's it. All right, you're gonna take that line limit and you're gonna create in your imagination, one of your giftings, by the way, okay, that you should have still, 
is you're going to create a sphere, a sphere that's going to go around that tool, all the way around, over the top, underneath. And in that sphere is going to be air gap, a visual air gap. And we're going to call her your air dielectric, your other best friend. That's your second best friend we're going to talk about today several times, and that's the air dielectric. And you're going to keep her and work with her because she's your best friend because you know since the tool's energized to some chunk, some degree, you know that you do not want to bypass that air dielectric with another hot face or with a ground potential. Because you know if you have a ground potential next to that meter head, you could experience an arc flash, yes? True, huh? Because you know how electricity works and you know how these tools work. So you know not to do that. So we're going to talk about some of that mitigation, that safety involved with these tools. All right, I was on the way to do, do some training with Encore last two Januaries ago. And I'm in Louisiana, go, on the way to go to Encore. I get to Louisiana just about to pass the Texas border and the safety guy with Encore, Mr. Billy, he's a great friend of mine, he calls me up and he says, hey Brent, we had an arc flash with one of your tools. And it's like, oh man, I was almost there. I got one more day. Can't, couldn't he just wait just a little longer? All right, so he sends me a picture and the picture of the guy's in the cabinet. He's in the cabinet and the picture shows me a static wire right next to that meter, right next to the meter. And guess what? He experienced an arc flash because no one had trained him ever in his career. Think about this. No one had ever trained him in his career that you can't do that. No one had trained him in his career that you got to keep the tool protected. You got to have an air dielectric around your tool because your tool's energized. I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to give you guys an equation. This is what we just posted this morning. Go to Beer Meters YouTube safety training and look at this, this video. It's, it's called X plus Y equals Z. It's kind of a cool video. My guys did a good job, actually. I was like, whoa, that's kind of cool. But anyways, X, th this, is, this is what you always want to remember with anybody's tool. Phasing, corded, wireless, it doesn't matter. They all work exactly the same. The, the, the math we're going to talk about is X plus Y equals Z. You know, we, we learned a lot of math in school that absolutely does us no good today. Zero. But this math I'm going to share with you is easy and it's going to do you good for the rest of your life. And you need to share this equation with your fellow line workers, your fellow apprentices coming up, all right? Because this equation is what you work with all the time. Always have, maybe you didn't know it, but you do. All right, so here's the equation. It's X. X is going to be your conductor. Whether it's energized or de-energized, doesn't matter, but that's X plus Y. Y is tool functionality. Y. Y. You always need to know the why. Always. If you are working with a foreman, you are working with your crew, and you're going over a tailboard, maybe you're inside talking about this big old job that's coming up before you go outside. Maybe you're on the job. You're doing your little walkabout, comparing notes as far as what you see as possible hazards or trips or risks out there on the job site. And, and you have a game plan. Game plan, right? Remember, we've got to control the ball. So you have a game plan. And then you guys get out in the field and the foreman says, hey, you guys, we're going to go ahead and change this game plan. Control the ball. What's in your head? We're going to change this game plan up a little bit. All right? So he's like, we're going to do this and this instead of that and, the, and those things. All right? We'll just slide something in. We're going to edit the game plan just a little bit. And if you, as part of the team, do not understand the why of that game plan and you just don't don't feel like you got to be shy don't feel like you're going to look stupid that's why guys get hurt because they don't want to speak up they don't want to ask why because they think everybody else is going to make fun of them that's bull crap if you can, if you do not have that warrior mentality inside of you, regardless of your job title, regardless of your experience, if you cannot ask why safely within your team, 
Your team's got a problem. Y'all get that? It's got a problem and you're not controlling the ball in the game. So you need to be free to ask why. It's the biggest question, why? Most important question, why? And you need to know. And if you don't understand the answer the first time, guess what? Ask again. Ask again. All right, so why? X, conductor, you guys get that? Why? Tool functionality. The why behind how the tool works. Here's how it works. What it does is it, it contacts, it looks at the capacitance, it couples with the capacitance, and it looks, the tool, the components inside, look at the current in relation to the ground plane, right here, the ground plane, and it gives you a voltage indication. It gives you, whether you're in phase, out of phase, phase to ground, it gives you that. The display, that's how it works. X plus Y, real simple, equals Z. Typically, we've always thought that Z equaled what we saw on the screen. That's false. That's not it at all. The Z is, here's the Z, safety, it's gotta be safety, and accurate information gathering. Y'all get that? Y'all get that? Okay. <laughs> all right, accurate information gathering. Okay, that's it. So it's always been safety. Remember, you got primary power here. You're, tr you're, t you're taking your tester, you're using your tester, and you're trusting the tester with your life. So does it not equal safety first? Yes or no? Absolutely. And accurate information gathering, what you get on the display. Okay, real simple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you a couple scenarios. These are important scenarios. So I get a call from a lead lineman several years ago, and the lead lineman said that he was using our analog tool. He was using our analog tool, and he said, your tool's broken, it sucks, it's no good, and we think we need to make a change. Okay, so I was like, okay, well, tell me about your experience. And he says, well, we're using, I'm using it on 7200. Lead lineman, I'm using it on 7200, I'm getting 13,000 volts. So I get there, he, I'm doing training. In the classroom, we get outside. I told him to keep that bucket truck in the same location, same scenario, and then after the training, we're gonna go back outside, you're gonna take your broke tool, and we're gonna use it again after the training. So here's a corner pole, there's a corner pole, okay? I know it's leaning a little bit to some of you folks, but if you go through Texas, you'll see a lot of these things leaning. There's a lot there. All right, He's, we're at the corner pole after the training gets in the bucket truck, same position, same location, and he takes his broke tool, he makes contact with the conductor, and he's getting about 7,400 volts. Because if you phase 7,200 and you're out of phase, you're gonna be close to 13,000 volts. He had a horn and light. He had a horn and light, and what he did is he was in the bucket. He calls me up and says, hey man, that horn and light, it's no good, it's telling me that I've got a energized conductor here, but I got a switch open. It's giving me a false positive. So I said, okay, let's do a video. Let's, you do a video, tell me what, and I wanna see it. I wanna see the switch, I wanna see everything you're doing in that bucket truck. So he calls me up, sends me the video. What do you think about this video? So here he is in the bucket truck. The switch over here is open. Okay, you see this lid, this box lid? It's open, that's the switch. He shows me that box lid and that switch is open. And then what he does is he's in the bucket, short sticking, he's got his back to the enemy. Man, I told him, man, if you're at all possible when you're working hot, but you guys work hot a lot, you need to always, in your mind, if you wanna control the ball, you're gonna remember who's in the stands, who's in the bleachers watching you play this game. And you got your back to that enemy, and that enemy wants you to lose the control of that ball. You're in close proximity of your enemy. Man, you better get that air dielectric, your best friend, back in play. Get it? It's football. Back in play. All right? So I told him, I said, man, I said, leave your bucket truck right where it's at. And I want you to turn on the other side of the stick and put the enemy in your front. That enemy needs to be in front of your face. So you know where it's at and you're situationally aware okay 
get back on your stick, man. Keep your air dielectric. That meter head is energized. I want you to get your air dielectric there too. I want you to have proper body position. Back on your stick, we recommend 36 inches. All right? Some folks drink swamp water in Florida and they say their line crews do 31 inches because of arc flash measurements. Why not say 32? Why you gotta be such an odd number? All right, but that's what they do, that's fine. They train the, the air dielectric. Get back on that tool and I want you to touch, touch that meter and he did and the meter was silent. The meter was silent. It worked. It was de-energized. So when he was short sticking, improper body position, he had his back to the enemy, improper body position times two, right? He was energized from that source behind him. The switch is open. You guys see that? That box lid, that cutout? Switch is open. You can see that visually. And he made, when he made contact with that conductor, the tool told him that conductor was energized. So let me ask you all a question. You guys seem to be real talkative this morning. Do you think that conductor, you think the tool was telling the truth? He said it was a false positive. But was it a false positive? Huh? You know how electricity works. It's not a theory. Was it a false positive or was it the real deal? Tell me. I'm just telling you what happened. Yeah. So what happened? Was the tool lying or not? Was that conductor energized? The box, you see the box lids open. Was that long source, was that conductor energized? Huh? Okay. It is energized through his body. The tool is telling the truth. The tool is telling him, hey bud, you have improper body position. You're working unsafe. This is not a safe work method. Short sticking. I was doing training in California, large utility in California. And another thing you don't want to ever do is take your gloved hands and you don't want a tool glove. You all get this? You don't want a tool glove. All right. This is not a safe practice either. What you're saying when you're short sticking or tool gloving, you're saying it's X plus Y plus U. That's the equation you create. And it does not equal safety and it does not equal accurate information gathering. Never has and it never will. This is improper, this is unsafe. It's not a work practice at all, okay? They, one of the gentlemen came up to me, he's been doing this for years. He had gray hair and he came up and he shared a story with me, an incident that took place, an incident that he never shared with anybody. And the reason why he never shared the incident with anybody is because their, their system, their team, okay, that is supposed to control the ball, their team didn't allow that. Because if you share an incident, their team, then you get reprimanded. You might lose a position. You might get talked down to if you have an incident, if you make a mistake. That's how their team worked. So he wouldn't share it with nobody, but he shared it with me because he knew it was safe to share with me. And I wasn't going to make fun of him. All right. And what happened was, is he was tool gloving his whole career up to that point. And this one day, he did something different. He changed it up a little bit. He lost control of the ball. This here is, that's just ignorance. He didn't know any difference. That's fine. But what he did is he lost real control of the ball and he made a big mistake. And what he did is he went to a capacitive test point barehanded. And he made contact with that capacitive test point barehanded. Now remember when he made contact with that capacitive test point, that capacitive test point is a chunk of that primary, about 10%, right? It's a chunk of that primary. And then that voltage coming through the tool from that conductor is a chunk of that voltage. And he got popped with that, didn't he? Because you know the tool's energized, he's barehanded, he got popped with that energized source. He only did it once, he'll never do it again, but how many linemen do that one thing once and they don't get a second chance? How many? So I was doing training last gen this last January and I went through Marana, just out of Tucson, Marana, Arizona, on my way to California. 
for more training. And I went to Trico Electric Cooperative just out of Tucson. And it was a nice, sunny Arizona day. A little cool, upper desert, higher Sonoran Desert, real pretty. Um, but it was a little cool. And what they did is the safety guy there said, hey, Brent, we've got 15 minutes before you start. We're going to do our thing first. And then you do your thing. I'm like, okay, that's great. I want to see your thing. <laughs> and so what they did is they did a tailboard. And what was so cool about this tailboard is they opened up the floor. And this is their process. They, they adopted this new way of thinking. And this new way of thinking is where we need to go nationwide. All the teams, all the line teams need to do exactly what this, they did. And what they did is they opened up the floor that anybody could share any incident that they had in the last week freely, openly, unashamedly, and respectfully. And it was so cool. And everybody, no one made fun of nobody. No one said, oh, man, you're an idiot. But anyways, nobody did stuff like that. Nobody. And everybody respected each other. And a couple guys stood up and said, hey, this happened, blah, blah, blah. And another guy, this happened. And everybody, you know why we share these incidences? You know why the guy that took his bare hand and went to the capacitive test point should have been able to freely share within his line team? so they can control the ball, so that his fellow line workers could learn from his mistake. And so that he, he wouldn't follow and, and other folks would, would listen and not do the same thing. So we learn, right? We got, we got knowledge equals understanding equals safety. And so we all learn, and we're getting better and better as a team controlling the ball. Y'all get that? Let's try to calm, slow, chill, be peaceful, all right? And let's play this game. Let's do this right. Let's win this game. Because in the stands, watching you is a thing called death. And that thing called death will do everything to take you out. And if you have uns unsafe work practices, if you take shortcuts, you're giving death, who's in the stand watching, the opportunity to strike. And if you give death, who's watching you every moment of the day, if you give death the opportunity for it to strike and take you out, because eventually it will, and get permission to, but if you work on safe, you're allowing death to have an opportunity to happen sooner. And we need you here. Your family needs you here. Don't rush things, all right? I need you here. You all complete one another. Every one of you guys, you don't even have to like each other. All right? But every one of you guys completes one another. I help complete you all, all's life, your game, controlling the ball. You all help complete my life. You all give me inspiration to help me, to help you. Let's control the ball together. Right here. Here's the ball. You see that? Control the ball, you win the game. All right? So years ago, I had a buddy. I had a buddy who worked the utilities in Louisiana. Great guy. Great family. Beautiful daughters. Lovely, lovely wife. Wonderful man. I mean, he was fun to be around, talk, jovial, serious at the same time. And he lived life. What happened was, he was driving down the road. He was on duty. He's driving his truck down the road. He's going freeway speed, about 70 miles an hour. There was a tractor trailer off to the side on the shoulder. For whatever reason, he runs into the back of it full speed, no braking at all. Boom. He's gone. Smoked. Don't know what happened. Don't know nothing. Okay? I come out of Georgia Power doing training in Georgia Power a little bit ago, and the contractor who did not receive the training, three of their boys, three of the, the bucket trucks came out, and I was packing up. And I'm very astute. I notice things. I look at things. I watch body language. I watch what's going on because I'm playing a game, and I got to keep control of the ball. And 
two of the three bucket trucks. Now this is a true story and you guys need to listen up. Two of the three bucket trucks, you got a lineman driving, you got an apprentice or whatever, another lineman to passenger seat of each bucket truck coming out. Two out of three, whoever was in the passenger seat was on their phone with their face in their phone doing whatever, on duty, all right? That's not controlling the ball. If you're sitting in the passenger seat, you better be on duty, you better be off your phone just as much as the driver because you gotta control the ball and work together as a team. You do your phone when you have a break. You do your phone later on. Y'all get that? This is serious business. And death is in the stands at every moment. Y'all get how this works? This is serious business. This is why guys don't come home. Because they play around, they don't, they don't think it's a true game. They play this game where it's all about them. And they lose that game. Eventually, if the game is all about you, you will lose. You're going to lose. Because you can never win if you don't include one another. All right? So, what we got? OSHA, 1910.269, you've got lowercase n. You go to lowercase n, talking about your temporary protective grounds. That whole section. You go to number five. Number five says, prior to installing your best friend, your TPGs, prior to installing your best friend, it says that you're gonna use a tester. <coughs> Anybody's tester. You're gonna use your tester to verify an absence of nominal voltage on the conductor, right? That's what it says. So typically we do an open test ground, all right? Typically that's what we do. How we're gonna train this is we're gonna take that foundation, OSHA regulations, the rules, we're going to take that foundation and we're going to build walls, we're going to build a roof, we're going to make a house, a house of safety from the foundation. And that house of safety, how we're going to do it, we're going to do five steps instead of three, not open test ground. What we're going to do is we're going to do test, open, test, test the tester, ground, five steps. It takes a little longer, a little more effort, but we get more information, more knowledge, more understanding equals more safety. We don't get as much jobs done, but guess what? You guys retire fat and sassy and happy from MTE, huh? Because you were safer and you get to retire. You got a great retirement. You got a great life. You're happy, all right? You didn't quite get as much production done, but what you did is you got your family done each other, your line family. I call you guys a line family, line team. That's what you get done, all right? Because you guys don't get her done. That's not our policy here, get her done. When you get a work order, the, the foreman doesn't say, hey, here's your work order, get her done. He never, never say that. Here's your work order, work safely. You have my permission to work safely today. How's that? That's a good foreman. That's a good foreman. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna test first. So we got, I'm gonna use for this presentation, the safety part, I'm gonna use a PD800W. The PD800W is a great meter. It has two functions, specifically. One, it's a wonderful voltage indicator up to 51 kV. If you're on 69, and you touch 69 with it, direct contact, the tool will tell you 51 kV. But if you're on 69 and it tells you 51, you know you got 69. But the highest it goes is 51. It's a great voltage indicator. And what it does is it got URD, underground residential distribution. And you put it on URD because it discriminates. The tool, you know how they work. If you put it on URD, you're telling the tool that you're close to the ground plane. So it's gonna be more accurate, right? If you're on overhead, you got an 08 setting. If you're on overhead, you're telling the tool you're far from the ground plane working overhead. We're the only manufacturer that does this. Nobody else does this. Our tools are more accurate because of that, all right? So we've got some capacitive test points. Maybe, th maybe we have three phases here, all right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make contact with those capacitive test points, direct contact. 
If you ever go to a utility that uses non-contact tools, you need to have a talk with a safety guy with the tool work methods and tell them they need to throw those tools away. because They're not safe. Non-contact. What if you're on an underbuild? What if you got three phases close by each other, close proximity? What if you're in a substation? You're going to get all kinds of funky readings. You're going to be presumptuous and you're going to be a guesser as a lineman. Okay? That's what you'll be. You want direct contact. Our tools are all direct contact. All right, so we'll go to these passive test points. Test on a live known voltage source. All right, so remember, you see that, Adam? So remember, the battery test is only a battery test. It only tests the battery. You never did test your tool on a live known voltage source unless you had one to test it with. So always test your tool on a live known voltage source prior to opening the switch. All right. Now it's not very accurate. The tool is not, anything under a thousand volts. It's not very accurate, but direct contact. We know that capacitive test point is energized for sure. Now we're going to go to this three phase overhead line right here. Okay. That looked like a three phase overhead line, Kyle. No. Use your gifts. Use your imagination. That's what it is now. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go with this three phase overhead line. And we're gonna test first before we open the switch to make sure our tools work in a live known voltage source prior to opening the switch. Put it in URD because this overhead line is pretty close to the ground plane. Direct contact, about 20,000 volts. Yesterday it was real wet rainy and we are getting about 23,000 volts. So your tool is going to tell you your conditions, your environmental conditions. If it's reading a little too high, it's a little unusually high, just a little bit, not a lot. Maybe it's because it was raining yesterday. Maybe it's because it was real moist yesterday. So that makes sense. The, tell, the tool is telling you your environmental conditions. Learn how to listen to the tool. Today we're more accurate. It's almost true RMS voltage today. Today's more drier. We don't have, I, my boots aren't wet. They were wet yesterday and cold. I was a little timid and, and feeling soft. And I was a little cold. So, and there was water on the concrete. So the readings were higher. And the tool was telling me that. Now it's more accurate. The tool's telling me that, hey, we got a drier day. We're feeling good. And the tool's feeling good. All right, so listen to your tool. Is telling you. So we test first. Then what we're going to do is we're going to open that switch. Okay. And then Kyle climbed the pole. Kyle will open the switch for me from the ground, whatever he likes to do. All right. As long as he's working safely. And then what we're going to do is we're going to retest. Step three, we retest. The tool is telling us the OSHA regs say you're going to verify an absence of nominal voltage. Your tools, beer tools, if that's what you're using, are accurate enough that they're going to tell you an absence of three voltage types. And this needs to be taught and trained. It's more safer to do it this way. We're going to verify an absence of induction, an absence of backfeed, and nominal voltage as per the regs. How's that? That's safer. So always remember that in your mind. We're going to look for an absence of all three. Okay, a friend of mine, he spoke at ECAUS. I got the recording, it's awesome. You guys could have it, just ask me, it's free. Uh, Lito Wilkins, he's a safety, regional safety manager for international line builders in California. And he's a safety guy now. He kind of had uh, an incident, personal incident, that is his calling. He shouldn't be alive today. And he was working on a tower with his buds and they had fall restraint in the truck first day they had fall restraining in the truck but they didn't practice with it so they weren't comfortable with it so always remember that practice you got to have uh, proficiency right you got to practice and that makes proficiency so you got to practice but they didn't practice so they weren't com comfortable with using it so they didn't use it 
this particular day, this exact same day. This is how life is. Remember that guy that's in the bleachers that's watching you called death? If you give it an opportunity, it'll take it. I guarantee you. So what happened was, as he was in that tower, they were changing out bells with a helicopter. And they talked, they had a tail board, and they talked about this cable coming down, this big old static, this cable that's gonna take some of the static out of the system to ground. And they were concerned about it, but eh, maybe, ah, no, it's okay, we're good. They didn't test it, they didn't check it out, nothing. So he's walking across, he's walking across, he's way above the ground, what, 80 feet or so. He's walking ab above the ground on that big tower, and he's got, he's got all his, uh, you know, they're working bare hand and all that crap. So he takes, he takes his hand, he grabs a hold of that cable, and then his wrist hits the, his wrist, after he grabs it, his wrist hits that angle iron, and his boot lug, all of a sudden, vultures is flowing through his body after he grabbed induction. Induction. Remember, you want tools accurate enough to verify a lack of induction, back feed and nominal voltage. He had induction, and what was happening is, as the cycles were going through him, he knew he was going to die if he kept hanging on to that cable, and he realized that it was bleeding off, and he could just about let go, but then it would come back and clamp down hard on it. And then he'd get a little loose, and all of a sudden, Real quick, real fast, real quick cycles. But everything, when you're about to die, everything slows down. You don't feel no pain. Your body's in shock. Something's about to happen big time. And he realizes that the only way he's going to get out of this mess is if he purposely falls backward when he has that little bit of loose grip. He's going to purposely fall backward. He has no fall restraint. It's in the truck, okay? And he's hoping that the angle iron that he's going to fall into is going to hold him. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. So he purposely falls backward and the angle iron held him. Two and a half hours later, he's in the hospital because they didn't practice saving him, bringing somebody out of that predicament in Timbuktu, California to the hospital. They never practiced it, so they didn't even use the helicopter to help him. And they could have, but they didn't practice it. So they didn't. So he has to have a two and a half hour drive. He's barely, he, you know, he all, he's just about dead. He gets to the hospital, take off his boot, and you can smell the burnt meat, the burnt flesh, and smell you never forget. And then he lives through it. He's got a hole in his hand. He's got a hole in his leg or his, his foot, and he lives through it. So now he's a safety guy. And that, that video is 003, ECOS, Lyman Safety National Webinar 003, My Shocking Awakening. And if you watch it, you got to bring tissue because he'll show you in his, in his presentation, he'll show you a picture, a slide of his PowerPoint that you'll see of who's in the bleachers. And it's his wife and children because they're watching him. And that's in this PowerPoint. Okay. This is serious stuff. So we verify step three. And then what we're going to do is step four is we're gonna test our tester on a live known voltage source. We have a handheld power supply. We have a three kV power supply, a box. This is a newer, newer system, a little more co compact, a little easier to use, and you can use a handheld power supply. Test the tester. If you're on an outage, let's see if it's working, yeah. If you have an outage, restoration, and you don't have a live known voltage source, and you gotta test your tester as step one, this is step one. Right here, okay? Test the tester on a live known voltage source, okay? All right, then what we, we verified positively that there's no induction, no back feed, no nominal voltage, now we ground, step five, okay? Real simple, okay? Any questions thus far, guys? Huh, any questions? Don't forget the hat if you need a hat. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're going to talk about arc flash mitigation. And this is the biggest call that we used to get. It's, it's dropping big time because utilities are starting to teach their linemen what to do. If they're using a tester, ours or anybody else's, remember, and you got to protect that air dielectric. You have another hot phase nearby. You got, you got a concentric. You got a cabinet, maybe a tight bolt that that cabinet, maybe you're on a feed through and that feed through shoves it shows that one of those phases is a little closer than to the cabinet than you like, maybe. So what you do is you, you take 
a zero ohm extension and you add it to your tool. So here's before, possible arc flash, zero ohm extension, here's after. Zero ohm extension, arc flash prevention. How's that? Okay, so you just simply put one of those on and then you won't have no arc flash on your tool. Encore that had that issue where the guy did have an arc flash with the tool, they put one of these in every kit, all their linemen, like about 800 linemen. They put one in every kit and so, and they train their linemen now for that possibility to be aware and to protect your best friend, air dielectric. So they won't, they'll never call us again on that, never. That's good, I'll have more time with my wife, okay? That's why I'm glad you guys are videoing taping this, because I want to come back here anytime soon. I like coming here, seeing you guys, but I'd rather be home with her. She's way better looking, okay? All right, so what we got is zero ohm extension right here. You see those numbers? Are they a little lower now than they were before? They were real accurate, about 20,000 volts, which is, that's a 19.934.5, so it's about 20,000 volts. Now the numbers are a little lower, correct? So my question to you all, why are these numbers lower? Two things have changed physically than previous without the zero ohm extension. Two things have taken place. Remember how the tools work, the, the why of how the tools work, right? Source, ground, blah, blah, blah. What two things have physically taken place now that you have the zero ohm extension? We are further from the source, right? Yes or no? Okay. So, you know how the tool works. Couples with the capacitance, it looks, it looks at that capacitance, looks at that, that current in relation to the ground plane. So the tool is further from the source and it's further from what? Where's your body from? Dirt and water. It's further from dirt and water. Okay. Earth, further from Earth. So our numbers are lower. So that's what it does. It's now it equals Z, equals safer. It equals safer, more safety, right? And you still get accurate information. All right, so I was doing training and they, a couple guys told me about an arc flash incident that took place. And what happened was, is two guys are working a cabinet loose from its foundation. One guy was, they were working elbows. One guy was on a stick. He had his arc flash, or arc flash. He had his air dielectric right here. Air gap between him and the meter head, or him and his tooling, because he didn't have a meter. He was just working the elbows. He had that, that air dielectric. The other guy noticed the cabinet was loose from its foundation, and it was. And what he did is he took his glove hand, and he went and put his gloved hand on that cabinet. When he put his gloved hand on that cabinet, he got arc flashed. So the moral of the story is, is you want to understand that your gloves are not your best friend. When the, one guy is working the stick, he had the air dielectric between him and the elbows. He's working the stick. He had his air dielectric, his best friend. The other guy trusted a good friend, his gloves. And when he put his gloved hand on that cabinet, he kicked the air dielectric, his best friend, to the curb and the good friend let him down, okay? So don't think that your good friend is gonna make you invincible. Your best friend will, but a good friend can sometimes let you down. He got arc flash, spent some time in the hospital, did not lose any body parts. He's fine today, all right? But what they said in the incident report, the reason why he got arc flashed is because there is rat piss in the cable. Now think about that. That's why he got arc flashed. So here's the incident report. So we're not gonna talk about this incident report because there's nothing to talk about. We're not gonna share it. We're not gonna speak about it. And we're not gonna learn from it and grow from it as far as the game, controlling the ball. We're gonna just say it's a rat piss. We're gonna take this incident, put it underneath the rug, sweep it up a little bit, and let's go back to work, get her done. The fact is it wasn't rat piss, that's a scapegoat. Okay, but I call it a scape rat. Okay, the fact is, what happened is this. All right, so you all see those numbers? 
I got gloves on. Can you see that, Adam? Good, okay. What's happening? Are they going up? Those numbers going up? They are, okay? But you know why they're going up. You know that even though I'm wearing gloves, you know what's on the other side of that PPE. It's you, your body, your temporary tent, your dirt and water you're inside of. That's what's behind these gloves. And you know how electricity works. When you're working safe, you know that, that you, your body, even when working safe, couples with electricity to some measurable degree. That's why you have MAD, minimum approach distances, right? But you know that when you're, if you're working unsafe, taking shortcuts, that those electrons, as you saw, they get excited, correct? They did, didn't they? Would those numbers go up? So that means the electrons are getting excited. The electrons are thinking inside. They're going to go home. And that thing on the, on the bleachers, that's your adversary, death, is thinking, maybe this time. huh? That's, that's how death thinks. That's why it's named death. Okay? That's all it thinks about. Nothing else. All right? Gets pretty excited there. And that's what happened. What happened was when he put his gloved hand, those electrons got a little too excited, and he crossed the red line. He did not know where the red line is. You all don't know where that red line is exactly. Environmental conditions can change that red line. And that red line, if it's wet out like yesterday, that red line can come out to, to you a little more than today. You just don't know, so don't take chances. Control the ball. Always win the game. You cannot lose this game if you guys control the ball. Guaranteed. It's a guaranteed win. huh? You can have confidence in one another. It's a guaranteed win because our mind's in it to win it. Here we go. Mr. Kyle, he just turned into a journeyman lineman, right? Celebrate, man. Yes, sir. Are you happy? I am. Good, good. You know, I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you guys a story about a journeyman lineman that just became a journeyman lineman. Several years ago, he just became a journeyman lineman. Moved on up, bigger paycheck. He's all happy. He just got married. He's got a brand new wife, brand new position, journeyman lineman. No longer being called the A word. No more called the A word, apprentice. Okay? He's within an hour of getting a house, purchasing a house, signing a house that he's going to be able to get and afford with his brand new beautiful wife. They got this big house coming up for their brand new. One day, they're going to have kids and family. And what's going to happen is in an hour, he's going to sign on these papers. He's t it's at the end of the day. It's hot. He's tired. <laughs> he's hungry a little bit. So here's the thing. He's about to sign on a brand new house. End of the day. He's all excited. He's got a lot of things controlling the ball on this day. All of a sudden, his arm, shoulder, touches that primary as he's got his hand on a wire, ground wire. He blacks out. Wakes up in the hospital. He's in the hospital. He wakes up. He looks around. Both arms are completely gone. Completely gone. Three months later, his wife leaves him. Three months later, he lost his job. He lost his house. He goes from here to the very highest that he could possibly imagine life could be like to down here the very lowest. You know why? His, get, his head, the ball, he wasn't controlling the ball at all. And it was all right here. It's his fault. He didn't make a, he didn't sacrifice. He didn't sacrifice nothing. You know, we get to the point where we have these big processions. Someone get, passes away because of an incident on the job. We get the bucket trucks out. We hang all the flags. We do the bagpipes. We put them in the dirt. And that's called learned helplessness. 
That's what that's called. It's learned helplessness. That's what you're learning when we do that. Okay? And then we say things like, well, he sacrificed his life. Well, the truth is, if you go root cause analysis, do a root cause analysis, what was he thinking about? It wasn't his job. What was his groundman thinking about who's supposed to be watching his brother's bat? Huh? What is the foreman that's on the ground letting the apprentice do the work or letting the new lineman do the work while he's in the truck shuffling papers? How come he's not outside watching Mr. Kyle? Everything, every action. Why not? Why is he on his friggin' phone? Huh? Here's the deal. You guys got to stay focused. That's why this is happening. You guys got to watch after this man. And he has a responsibility to watch after you. And right now, he's got to watch after me. Okay? That's how it is. All right. So, Kyle, go ahead. He's got a PD-25. The secondary probe's on ground, corded, corded meter. It's looking at that current, giving you a voltage indication to ground plane through the cord. Same as through the air, just through the cord instead. Go ahead, Kyle, if you could stand in the front right here so they can see and let Mr. Adam see those numbers. When you, see, when you have those numbers, and if you can speak loud and let everybody know, know what those numbers are when you see them, okay? Right. Don't tell me, tell them, okay? All right, you ready? All right, so put it, so this tool is a, is a very accurate true RMS meter, plus or minus 1% true RMS. It's going to give you right on the money. Starts working at one volt. You can use this. We call it a multi-tool. It's one of Walter's. Uh, 17 patents. You can use it as a high pot tool, phasing tool, phase to ground, look at your potential. You can use it to cable ID tools because it, or tools, co uh, cable conductors because it has a 100 volt battery pack accessory that you can see it looks at DC so you can identify cable. Oh, there's 100 volts, that's the cable. Okay. You can also test lightning arresters with it. You can verify your regulator neutrals in the neutral position or not because it's so accurate. You can also um, de-energize, if you use it as a high pot, de-energize that, that potential back to ground. Um, de-energize capacitors with it as well. It does a lot, multimeter. All right, so Mr. Kyle, if you can read the voltage, I'm working safe. MTE trained me, I'm gonna keep my air dielectric, air dielectric because they say I need to and they told me why, all right? Because I'm coupling when I'm working hot with my, my job. It's coupling with my body, but I want to be as safe as possible. And they want me to be safe. They give me permission to work safely. So I'm going to be back on my stick at least 36 inches. Okay? Mr. Kyle, if you could read the voltage on my boot, put it in 2 kV. Are you Cody or Kyle? Kyle. What's Cody say? Is that your, your twin brother? No, it's a jacket I swapped with someone. <laughs> it fit me better. Okay. Why, you've been kind of eating more lately? Okay. okay. All right, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, get on the other side, because there you go, because Mr. Adam, there you go, Adam can see this. Okay? Let me know, let everybody know the voltage on my boot. Go ahead, touch the top of it. Don't be, don't be shy. Just keep your dielectric with me. Okay. Okay? Go ahead, what you get? 25. Tell them. 25. <laughs> there you go. You quick learner. All right, back. 25. Nice. 26. Okay. That's good. You can you can stop. All right. Inside glove. I'll make a tunnel. Go inside that tunnel. Touch that glove on the rubber. What you get? 27. Do you see that, Adam? Can you see that? A little bit. 27. Okay. Well, let's say. I've never been trained safe, this, this lineman safety and tool training. I don't work at MTE, and I am, I'm short stick. All right, I'm short stick. Horrible name to have, but everybody calls me short stick. I don't even get why, okay? But that's my nickname, apparently, so I'm short stick. No one's ever told me to keep my air dielectric. This is what I do, all right? Okay, measure that voltage. Same three, boot first. Okay, back. 45. Glove, inside glove. Keep going, inside glove. There you go. 70. Okay, 
70 volts. A little more unsafe, isn't it? Can you do it with your gloves off at the end of the stick? My gloves what? Can you do it with your gloves off at the end of the stick? I don't want to. But I'll, I'll show you the voltage at the end of the stick without my hands in the way. How's that? Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to be tool glover. You know, I, I, I hold the tool in my gloved hand sometimes. No one ever told me it's unsafe. I didn't know. So the equation of this tool is X plus Y plus me equals, never equals safety, never has, never equals accurate information gathering. So I'm tool glover. Okay, boot. 260. You telling them? Go ahead, tell them. 72. <laughs> okay, inside glove. Three oh five. Three oh five. All right. Did that sound safe? I've got gloves on, and you're getting three hundred and five volts. Getting a couple hundred volts on my back. Does that sound safe? Huh? That means no. Okay. You got one no. Good. All right. Go ahead, Kyle. Read that voltage right there on that stick. The stick is insulated. What you got? Twenty-seven. See. Go ahead. Short stick. Halfway. What you get? 160. 160? Go to the meter head itself. One. <laughs> huh? One? Go to the top of the meter. Right here. What you get? 745. Okay. 745. You guys you see that? So that meter, remember your tools when you're using them are not insulated, they're not isolated. They are energized. Now this is 20,000 volts. If you're on 7200 or your, what do you have, 14.4? Is that what you guys have, 14.4? All right, it would be less, obviously. All right, but that's what's happening here. All right, here we go. So we're at the left pad mount house. Kyle and I, Mr. Kyle and I are, go well, Cody, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna, we're gonna phase this left pad mount house here in Murfreesboro. And we're at this job site, new job site. Every job site, what we wanna do is we're gonna go phase the ground. I'm gonna put this cord inside here, out of the way. All right, we're gonna go phase the ground. And the reason why is we're gonna test first. We're gonna make sure what you're gonna phase. You gotta make sure that your your uh, conductors are energized for you phase, obviously. You're also, we're gonna verify the tools working properly on a live known voltage source, obviously. Also, what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna phase, we're gonna test hot prior to phasing is because Mr. Kyle and I are gonna verify that our head's in the game. Him and I are gonna talk. When you guys have that tailboard job brief, when you guys have that job brief, when you sign it, in the room or out in the field, whenever you sign it, you don't sign off on your name. That's not what it's about. The job brief, you're gonna verify on that job brief that you, when you sign, that your lineman's oath is effective, that your covenant with your fellow team players controlling the ball is, an, is active. It's real, all right? You're also gonna add two lines to that job brief. One line is going to say you are mutually you are, you are mutually responsible. In other words, Mr. Kyle, I know when he signed that that he was an out all night drinking with the boys. I know for a fact he knew he was going to work the next day. He didn't know it was me. He was hoping it wasn't me, but it was. But he didn't stay out all night drinking with the boys. He got a pretty good dinner and he got some pretty good sleep because he's mutually responsible for his crew the next day. So your preparation, you guys, when you play, a fo when you play football, what'd you do the night before? You eat, what did coach say? Get rest, eat good, be ready, right? Did he say that? Of course he did. Line work is the same way. If you're gonna go to work the next day, if you're on call, you're not out drinking with the boys. That's not being mutual, I'm sorry, 
That's not being personally accountable. That's personal accountability. All right? You got to be personally accountable the hours prior to the work. Personally. All right? But now we're together. Me and Mr. Kyle are together. And we assign that job brief. The second line that's going to be added is that you're going to be mutually accountable. So during that day, that job site, from start to finish, you're going to be watching out for your brother's back. If he's driving across, I noticed one line guy, he drove across this early this morning. It was still dark. To me, he drove too fast. To me. I noticed it. But you're going to be watching. I'm just serious. I'm being honest, and we can talk about these things. But, but we've got to watch out for each other the whole time. All right? All day long. Okay? So we're going to do a test first. Go ahead, Cody. What's your voltage there? What's your, what's your voltage? Phase the ground. See that, Adam? 177. 177. The next one. There you go. 230. 230. So about 80 to about 50 volts difference. So with this tool, if you phase and you're in phase, what you'll see is the difference, about 50 volts. You do the subtraction, that's where you get zero. All right? If we're out of phase, we'll see something over 300, maybe close to 400. You don't need a calculator. It's just going to be a very high number compared to your phase to ground numbers. You're out of phase. So I'm going to go to the other side. This cord here, this cord here, we build this cord in South Carolina with the rest of our tooling. This is a cord within a cord. No other manufacturer in the world does this. We're the only ones. That's because we can and these tools are safer. This cord, when you use this tool, the cord can be on the ground, the cord can be on the metal box, metal can, or whatever. It's safe. It's shielded at 35,000 volts. Okay, it's a very safe cord. But treat it as if it's energized because it's part of the tool. If you got to stay 36 inches away from the tool, you're going to try to stay 36 inches away from the cord because it's part of the tool. All right. Ready? Okay. I'm going to go to the other side of the box over there. You come here. Go ahead. Come here. Right there. Okay. What you get? 43. 43. That's close to 50. Do the math. Same phase. You guys get that? Simple to use. Very accurate. All right. Let's phase this cabinet right here. That 12208 cabinet. That's on the side of the trailer right here. Mr. Co Mr. Cody. They don't get you. They can't afford a bigger jacket for you? <laughs> huh? They don't make them this big. They don't? No. What is that, like <laughs> super size? A 2X? 2X long. Dang. Well, you're just a double size guy. All right. So, Mr. 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 Kyle, it's hard to tell which name you are. Go ahead to that lug right there. All right. What you got? 118. 118. Okay. Phase the ground. Stay there. Go back. Stay there. I'm doing all the work. Okay. Okay. You you just, I'm the apprentice. I'll work for you. Okay. Okay. What you get? Zero. Zero. Same phase. Stay there. What you get? 206. 206. Out of phase. Cool. All right. Let's phase this cabinet here. This three phase cabinet. So what we're going to do in order to phase this three phase cabinet, actually, I want to take this cord. Yeah, let's go ahead. You got the right idea. You're right. I was wrong. Okay. We got to change out our accessories, correct? So we got to get bushing adapters, right? Yes, sir. All right. So get that bushing adapter on that cone right there. No, that one. Okay. Okay. Wait, wait. Co <laughs> Mr. Kyle and I, we know that when we make an accessory change, when we make a tool change, when we make an equipment change, or maybe it's hot and muggy out, and Mr. Kyle has swamp britches and he needs to make a britches change. We're going to walk away from that potential. Come on. We're going to take a couple steps back from the potential and make the change. Okay? So go ahead, take that straight probe off. 
and put on your bushing adapter. All right? You guys got roly-poly rocks, slippery grass. If you're going to make any kind of change, you're always, it's your work method, you're always going to get away from that place and make that change. Always. All right? If you're, if you're working a bucket and you're going to make some drastic change in that bucket and you got some potentials close by, just for a moment, maybe move the bucket a little bit readjust and then move back into your job all right it just takes a little extra time but you're a lot safer okay good okay the coat does look good on you though Thank you. yeah it fits well does cody know you took his coat Got mine. Oh, really? So he slimmed up. Huh? <laughs> huh? All right, here we go. You are feeling the fire. <laughs> All right, go phase the ground. We're at, the, we're at this middle pad mount house. We're going to verify the tools working properly on a live known voltage source. Mr. Kyle and I are reconfirming that we got each other's back and we're talking about it. Even though we don't like each other, that's what you got to do because we got to control the ball. And if you don't have communication, regardless of if you like them or not, so you decide you don't want communication with that person, then guess what? At that moment, you are not controlling the ball. And guess who's in the bleachers watching you? One, your family, your kids, your wife, they're watching you, but so is your adversary. So you better learn to control the ball and you better talk about things, all right? All right. So. I'm gonna, so you got one. Yeah. Okay, so obviously the tool's in the wrong position. It doesn't hurt the tool if it's in the wrong position. The tool's telling him he's got a funky number. So Mr. Kyle is gonna readjust the tool to 25 kV. Okay? We got about five minutes. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay, what you get? 0.3. 0.3. It's not zero. There's a little bleed in that cord. Hear it? Pretty exciting, huh? Mm -hmm. A little close to your foot there. All right, a little bleed in that cord. All right, but it's the same phase. Now, whenever you're phasing or high potting, you're always going to take the secondary probe off last. Or, I'm sorry, first. You always go to ground with the secondary probe, so we'll do that. Now, Mr. Kyle, he's going to take the meter probe off last because he wants the tool to speak to him and tell him the tool is safe and de-energized. All right, so always take the meter head off last. Okay, go ahead, de-energize. Mm -hmm. Did it take a couple seconds? Yes. Took a couple seconds. The reason why it took a couple seconds is because of the resistors in the probe tip that you guys know about. It's not gonna be instant, so let it just drain out. Same with high potty. When you use this tool to drain out the high pot, it's going to take a few seconds. Let the tool tell you when it's zeroed out. When it's zeroed out, it's safe. Until then, it's not. Okay? All right, good job. All right, that's all. You did good. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kyle. You know, it, to be a leader, to be a leader, it's a learning process to be a leader. You just don't, you're not born leader. Okay? Some folks, some folks, they move up in the ranks in their job because they're good at doing a job. Maybe they're good, they're a really good lineman, they become foreman, they're really good at their job, they become supervisor, they're really good at their job, they become, uh, you know, lead, lot, lead whatever, all right, over everybody. Maybe they're a superintendent or something over all the guy, all the crews. Just because you got a superintendent or something that's over your crews, doesn't mean they're a good leader. Just because you're good at your job doesn't mean you're a good leader. Leadership takes knowledge. You've got to learn. You've got to learn how to control the ball. If you all are doing things, practicing things, to where your mind's not working together as a team, controlling the ball, then the leadership has an issue. All right? And the folks that are team players from the water boy all the way up to the quarterback. They got to know that together they control the ball. Okay? 
And you guys got to work as a team. This is important. Years ago, I have a good friend of mine. I got a, a lot of safety guys, are, they're good buds. But anyways, about 25 years ago, a friend of mine, journeyman lineman, got, gets this call. And he gets this call and he's got to drive to this location. It's about a three hour drive and it's an emergency. You've got to come to this job site. He's like, what the heck? Just take care of it. You guys are there. No, you got to come. So he, okay, he gets to this job site. He sees the, the, the flashing lights. He sees on top of the pole that there's a tarp over something. And he gets there and he's like, okay, what do you guys need fr from me? They said to him, you got to climb that pole and extract that guy up there. Why didn't you guys do it? it took me three hours. No, you got to do it. So he, he climbs the pole. He gets up there and he pulls back that tarp. And he can smell that smell. And he sees that young man's face, an apprentice. He sees that young man's face. He'll never forget that. <clears throat> it's hard. Anyways, apparently what happened is they were working on a line that was de-energized. Somebody came in, saw the switch was open, came to a shift, closed the, shift, uh, closed the switch in, Oof, smoke, smoke that furnace. They didn't set up grounds. They assumed that line was going to stay safe. There was no grounds. Huh? No EPZ. They just assumed that that line was going to stay open. It didn't. So they said to him, he got the, the, the young apprentice down, no longer in the body. The body went back to dirt, went back to, to uh, water. And they said, you got to go talk to his mom. You got to go tell her. What the heck? So now he's got to go do this too. He knocks on the door. His sister. His sister opens the door. His nephew died. He helped get him that job several years before that incident. He actually helped get him that job. All right. Why was that switch closed? Why was the ball dropped? Why were they not focused as a team? The guy in the switching room. Why was he not coming on board? Why was there no communication? Huh? It had nothing to do with the lack of safety training. You guys get this? You guys are playing a game. And if you guys do not play this game as a team, you will lose. You will lose. All right.